Hello, my friends, and welcome back. Thank you very much for being with me again today. As I always say, I like when people tell you straight to your face that they're going to punch you in the face or they will give you a dollar or something, and they do it, good or bad, instead of uh, pretending, you know, uh, hurt you, and then they say, hey, actually, I'm a good person and I did good to you. No, you didn't. Uh, yes, I did. So, anyway, let the, the facts show who you are and uh, what exactly you think. Not the words. Words are always misleading. Someone said that words are just there. We express them just to hide the truth, our real intentions. But anyway, in this case, I have a um, political scientist um, who's going to make a case um, that Russia should be divided in two sides. Uh, one owned by China and the other one owned by um, United States of America. Now, obviously, this kind of attitude is a tyrannical um, attitude. But anyway, this gentleman, um, as I said, he's a political scientist. He graduated from uh, Harvard. I just uh, uh, did a very small uh, research on him because I think his name uh, drew my attention. Uh, towards uh, doing some uh, research, but I couldn't find what I was looking for, but I still have a gut feeling. I can't tell you more about that one. So this guy's name is Mikola David Yuk. David Yuk, okay? And by the last name, the end of the last name, tells me that he must be Ukrainian. Usually names that end, last names that end with Yuk, David Yuk, Voloshchuk, Kavalyuk, Dikliuk, Pusiliuk, are... Uh, um, Ukrainian, but it doesn't matter. Uh, if you tell the truth and uh, you're honest, it doesn't matter what you are, right? And David, uh, uh, in the last name, directs me to some other uh, paths. So, this article comes from the New Voice of Ukraine, and this is the title. Russia should be divided by US and China, argues political scientist. This article comes from November 20th, today, 2022. So, should be divided. This political scientist, um, Harvard graduated. So let's see what points he makes and based on what kind of uh, uh, common great, greater good. The United States and China should divide up Russia, political scientist Mikola Davidyuk said in an interview with Radio NV on November 19. Uh, in the, and I'm quoting Mr. Davidyuk. In the conditions that exist today, China and the United States should divide Russia in the proportions of their greatness, power, in order to pacify it, to make it the largest pacifist state in the world, David Duke said. Okay, well, that means that someone has control. Someone is in charge. Who appoints that? He tells us, power. And greatness. Now, power and greatness. Greatness in what way? In character? <laughs> I will have some questions there. Power? Yeah. So, power dictates? How about voting? How about we, uh, let's say, divide uh, United States of America? Is that how it works? Based on what? On what it did in the past 30 years? Should we look at that like that? Should we vote? I think if you, if you put this vote in the United Nations... Uh, General Assembly, you will not be surprised of the outcome of the vote. Let's put it, say, okay, we vote. Uh, United States should be divided uh, in uh, 10 pieces belonging one to, I don't know, uh, Norway, some to Zimbabwe, some to, I don't know, uh, whatever the other countries, North Korea, Iran, China, and Russia. Let's vote. I am very confident it's going to be 51-49. That's going to be majority vote, not, uh, you know, uh, no. Majority. I'm guaranteeing you it's going to be more than 70% saying, yes, let's do it. Should be? No. So, democratically, no, but uh, with force, yes. Now, let's see what David Duke, who we should look at the beginning in the, what, of his statement. In the conditions that exist today. Can you tell me what exactly the conditions are? Because the conditions you're going to state might not be the real conditions that are there. Because you... I'm just, you know, expecting you to ignore certain facts 
and just overemphasize others. And you pick and choose. And then you say, these are the conditions. Oh, hold on. Let me bring you some more evidence and facts that would uh, reshape your conditions. And then we talk about that. So let's see. According to the political expert, so this guy's an expert. Do you think he has uh, tyrannical and uh, um, totalitarian uh, traits? Like we all do, but he expresses them based on his, um, how do you call it, uh, uh, I don't know, education that he, uh, or whatever terms I, sh I should use here, uh, expert, he's an expert, he's a political scientist. So if it's a guy over there who, I don't know, sells, uh, sells shoes, has an opinion, it's one thing, but when you have an expert, right, saying these kind of things and having this kind of traits, which I think he has, based on power and uh, relevance, right, greatness and power, not good, but he can, he can have this opinion. I'm just trying to uh, point out to you that these people think this way. And that's going to get me with the second point of this uh, video, what the Russians said, what the West want to accomplish with this uh, um, Ukraine war. So according to the political expert, not only Ukraine, but the whole world will be safe in the regime if the regime of Russian dictator Vladimir Putin were to be destroyed. Hmm, okay. I thought it was the Russians who ha should have the power to vote. So he's not a very good friend of democracy, I guess. You, and I'm quoting, Ukraine will be able to continue working because only the dismantling of the Putin regime will allow us to feel confident here, Daniluk, Davidyuk said. Okay, Ukraine will be able to continue working. Can I say working and killing the Russian population in uh, what was Ukraine? Is that what you mean? Is that a fact? Is that a fact that Kiev sent military to subdue those uh, separatist uh, regions? Is it a fact? Yes. Is that the work you're talking about? To continue working or not? Oh, you don't like that argument. I know. But again, why did they send that? Why did, they, why did those guys want to separate? Because why? Oh, because they overthrew the government, the democratic elected government of Ukraine. Who? Oh, those are called traitors that do such a thing violently with the help of outside uh, agencies. Right? So, hey, David Duke. Right? You, see, you pick and choose and you speak in generalities. Hope and change. Generalities. What do you mean? So, and I'm quoting again, because even the absence of Putin... Putin was voted in the office. Were you? He was voted. So you can't go and tell the Russians you got to change this guy because we think he's danger. That means the whole Russia is dangerous, all the population. Therefore, your conclusion would be we forcefully go get rid of the Russian leadership and we tell the Russians how to live. We divide it in two. China and United States. Great. Didn't Hitler, Hitler want to do that? Hey, David Yuk. Didn't Hitler want to do that and have his sphere of influence and have other countries because he thought that, you know, they needed the land and people to work for their expansion, intellectual and economic and military, uh, you know, development. Hmm? Okay. And didn't they, uh, didn't the Nazis say that there were some groups that were inherently bad and they have to, you know what I mean? No? What about the Russians now? Don't you see a little bit, a little bit of a connection? David Yuk, I thought you learned something, but no, because uh, usually studies, studies say that, not me, like I'm just a messenger here. People who uh, were abused tend to abuse more than a person who was not abused. So David Yuk, watch your, um, watch your thing. Because even in the absence of Putin, but not changing the system, leaves the system. What do you mean? The system being a democratic system, the son of Russian Security Council Secretary Nikolai Patrushev will be tougher than Putin. And Patrushev, everyone, everyone understand this. If you don't, then you're a bad person, I guess. You want to understand that. Well, I don't understand that. It's because I'm dumb. Must be. And former Russian President Dmitry Medvedev, Moscow Mayor Sergei Sobyanin, or anyone else who comes in will be pondering revenge. So what is he saying? Exactly what I said many times before. They 
with this uh, tyrannical guy need to cut all these guys I don't know as I said uh, a new uh, Nuremberg trials or whatever just go straight to uh, Mussolini's uh, square of Milano in Milano go straight to that bypass the time that they're gonna wait they're gonna waste with uh, uh, the Nuremberg trials I guess so I guess so I guess yeah and uh, did you like what happened in uh, with Mussolini I didn't and I don't I think he should be trialed you say trialed and we go to the Nuremberg trials <laughs> not like that no I didn't mean that so therefore that's his conclusion this political scientist from Harvard right Therefore, the United States and China, which are tearing Russia apart, are making it a truly pacifist state that will not have fascist ambitions. This is the goal for the world. Well, I think you expressed more fascist ambitions than the Russians did. But anyway, now let's go to what the Russians said. Russians, which is Putin and uh, I think Medvedev as well, and Lavrov, which are the people that matter. I'm not talking about, uh, you know, others. Um, they said this, the goal of the West, or what the West would like to see in Russia, is a disintegration of Russia in about five different uh, regions that they can control. They don't want, they want to destroy the Russian state. This guy, as idiot as he is, he says exactly that. And he gives United States and China, somehow, the moral, the moral authority, to be in charge of doing exactly that. Would you do that? And why United States? He says, because of the power and greatness. Greatness in what? In ability to invade other countries? I'm not gonna go down the list, you know it. Just look back in the past 30 years if you want, and you find them. So what's the greatness? I mean, I wouldn't trust someone who dropped two atomic bombs on two uh, cities, right? Just to make that political system change, which is terrorism, right? change its uh, vision and stop the war to save our boys. It's like the Russians would drop there some of you atomic bombs on, uh, uh, how do you call it, uh, Ukraine, God forbid, to save some lives or our boys and shorten the war. Hey, Truman, hey, does it work? Is it okay? No, it's not okay, obviously. So I wouldn't let those guys to be in charge of uh, deciding who, what country is going to have what and where. Um, so this guy is a very dangerous person and he's an expert and he graduated from Harvard. I didn't graduate from Harvard and uh, I'm not uh, invited to speak at Radio NV and uh, I'm not invited. I checked some. I think he has, has some books as well written about Putin and so on. So I'm not, I have some books written as well, but I'm not well known as he is. <laughs> so anyway, this is this guy who's promoted, right? Who's promoted. And this is the new voice of Ukraine. No wonder. But anyway, I like when people come and tell you, hey, I'm going to take your uh, family, I'm going to take your land, I'm going to do this. Instead of saying, no, you know what? I'm your friend, but you got to give me that in the name of friendship. But I will not give you anything but pain. All right? I don't like those whiz and, and you have to call me daddy. Good boy. All right? Good boy over there. No, I don't like that. Like right now. So uh, what do you think? Should uh, China and the United States decide... Uh, what countries should be and what countries should not be and peaceify them huh? because I'm not talking about uh, uh, China here I'm talking about the United States because the United States is a very peaceified country and looks for the world peace is that what it is? yeah this is da David Yuk alright combination between David and the Ukrainian Yuk Thank you very much for being with me again today. Stay strong, stay smart, look for the truth and be just.